Now that sound brings back some nice and some horrible memories at the same time. Hello everyone, I'm going to be looking at my new, in quotes, Windows 98 machine. So here's the hardware for the new Windows 98 machine. It's nothing too special. It's a pretty basic affair. As you can see, it's a Micro ATX board. The board is the ASUS Median 2001, also known as the ASUS CUV4X-CME. So if you pick up one of these, it also goes by that, and that's how you can find the drivers. CPU-wise, it is a Dependium 3 1B gigahertz, which is just a modern number. It's a 1 gigahertz CPU. It's not blazingly fast, but it's the fastest this board can actually take. In terms of the fan on top, it's a bit of a noisy affair. It's a cheap little 1U server fan from StarTech. It is very, very, very loud. But luckily, using something like this, which you can pick up with cheap, goes by various names, noise filters, you know, anything like that. It's just basically a resistor on a cable. You can get the fan speed right down and it's much, much, much better. In terms of graphics, you've gone for something not age appropriate for the machine, but the last generation of cards that this machine could use, it's a GeForce 6200, a bit of an old tatty box I'll give you, from PMY, not a bad little card and it is passively cooled. Now you might be saying, well, you can go for a faster card than that, or well, true, but this is Windows 98. I do have a 6600 lying around, but I wanted to go for a silent build. So this is the best I can get at the moment. This fan's still a bit loud. I'm gonna see if I can get a better cooling solution for this, but this will do for now. And because it's Windows 98, you need to have a sound card. And this is the Creative Sound Blaster Orgy SB1394, also known as the SB0090. And the SB1394 basically means it has a firewire adapter on the back if you need such a thing, which let's be honest, you probably don't. As you can probably see, I've got everything plugged in via USB rather than PS2. That's fine, it only comes with two USB ports. If I need more, and I probably will, I'm gonna add a card in here. This is all gonna go into a new case. Well, I say a new case, and a case I have lying around. And this will become my little project box going forward. In terms of RAM at the moment, we only have 256 meg RAM in here. It's only PC100, so there's room for improvement there. And in terms of storage, I'm gonna be using one of these. Though, as I will show in a bit, it doesn't seem to be quite up to scratch, which means I might have to go for maybe a SATA drive, maybe an SSD, in fact definitely an SSD. But this for convenience of getting files on and off, because I can just yank the SD card out and shove it into the machine. I could do that with it, an SSD I suppose, but this is just for convenience. So as you will see, there is some slight issues with load delay with this particular adapter. And of course there's an optical drive down here which you can't see, which will have CD audio going into here. For some other games, I'll show one that needs CD audio, but I am currently lacking in the cable, so I have one in order. And the reason for this build is my current Windows 98 machine is okay. You can only play some very, very basic things. And I wanted to play a few other things that I've been struggling to play on like Windows 10 and Windows 7. So this is where this comes in. I'll be sharing some footage via the camera onto the screen here, rather than video capture. I tried to do some video capture, but my current equipment is not suitable for this era of machine. I managed to get some footage out. You can do it in 69 aspect ratio or a very low resolution, which isn't suitable. My old capture card I used to use for this kind of stuff is unfortunately dead. So going forward, I'm going to have to find something better to do that with. But in the interim, this works fine. It's only for my enjoyment anyway, and I just like to share it because why not? So let's get this started up then, shall we? Bit of a tight setup, I'll give you that. 
But without further ado, let's get the machine on and let's see if it all works. Fingers crossed it doesn't blow up. Come on, beep please. Oh, good. Right, so yes, we have something on the screen. Let's go over the boot, that's what the coffee's for. But, got the Windows 98 logo, that's good. And double good. So we're all booted up and everything's good to go. So I've already installed a few games on here ready. So let me just readjust the camera and let's have a look what this machine can do. So here we go. We're only get resolution at 1024 by 768 because anything higher and well, it's not quite the retro feel, is it? So I've got fraps installed because it's the best I've got at the moment. So let's have a quick look at what we have on here. As you can see, I have a section of games already installed. We have Overboard, Quake 3, Theme Park World, and FIFA 2. So we will start off with a bit of FIFA 2. I have a no CD crack installed because I have to worry about it. 1024, 768. Fogging is on, but I can't remember if this card supports it or not. I'm pretty certain you need something older. But yeah. No fraps in the corner, but if anyone's played this game, you know that this is like a menu. And then when it goes into the game, it actually renders using DirectX. I've always equated feelings with getting caught. They both get in the way of my money. So there we go. We have audio which is always good audio is being captured it's not coming through any speakers here because that's just a terrible idea here we go we change resolution I sprung the lock on the side door for you Garrett it's the only good way in as you can see you're only getting like 25 fps but that's pretty common for here I never managed to get any higher than that but everywhere else is absolutely fine you might say it's a bit dark but this game is very dark anyway. I don't know if it's coming through on the audio, but every time you load this up, the resolution of the monitor does change. Which back in the day wouldn't have mattered because you'd have been on the CRT. This must be the door Basso mentioned. But on this uh, an LCD, you get a slightly different experience. Good thing the butler's out for the night. He left his lights on. But as you see, you've got a nice, smooth, above 60 FPS frame rate. You probably can't really hear the fan going over there, because it's not too bad, but it's still not quiet. Remembering the buttons of this game. And into darkness again. So there we go, that would do for Thief 2. It's a terrible game to try and capture, even with a capture card because it's just very dark. Now for the others, I'm going to have to use a CD. If you're not familiar with it, that's upside down. Sold Out Games was a very good brand of game for a while. If you wanted some older stuff, they were very cheap. And it's how I've got most of my, well at least my current copies of these games. So that was Theme Park World. Needs to go in because I haven't got the no CD crack on here. Any problem with CD drives, they're always very loud. And of course you've got to wait for it to load. But here we go. Theme Park World. Yeah. Also you get that nonsense going on. Good old CD auto run. Good old Bullfrog games. A lot of people don't like this compared to let's say Theme Park and Theme Hospital. <laughs> And that's fair enough. Welcome to Theme Park World. I'm the advisor around here, and I'm going to help you through the game. 
There's tons of great stuff to explore and do. I do like this little tutorial. What am I thinking? Though. I don't even know your name. Why don't you start by telling me who you are? Click on a new player button and type in your name. First, type your name into the text box. Then, click a button to choose an instant action or a full simulation game. When you're finished, click the tick button to get, go tick to get going. Just click on the gate of the park you want to play in first and the fun can begin. Whatever happened to those little tutorial things there? They were so charming, weren't they? Never beat black and white though. No, I should be about here. Of course, I remember. Yes, yes, yes. Enter a land of prehistoric mystery where reptilian giants roam the land and where you season the primordial soup. Welcome to Lost Kingdom, the theme park that time forgot. Just to get you started, I built a small park, nothing fancy, and I hired some staff to run it. It could use some fixing up, but hey, it's a start. To build the queue, extend the blueprint and click to set it down. Click on a path to hook it up to the queue, or click the end of the <coughs> See the control panel over there at the bottom left part of the screen? The buttons on it do a bunch of different things. Click them and I'll tell you more. Okay, well, it's a bit sensitive on the spin. So as you can see here, we're getting, what, 40 FPS? I mean, it doesn't feel slow, it feels like how I used to play it. It wasn't exactly a very well optimised game, I must admit. So, this is about what you'd expect to get it on even fast cards. This is running at a higher resolution, I think. I think it's running at 800 by 600 yeah. And it's only on medium, but it's a bit of a an oddball of a game but yeah if you've not played before it is fun so we'll quit out of that very bubbly buttons how very late 90s fun all the same not as good as the originals but it's still fun you might better off playing something like Relicus Tycoon so let's stick with a classic Quake 3 I mean who hasn't spent a long time playing this game, it is brilliant. Oh, yeah. let's, just, let's just do the first one, I suppose. Completely different to the first two games, of course, since it's all just multiplayer maps. But it is an absolute classic. Yeah, yeah, you can also open the rocket launcher. Where is he? Around here somewhere. Okay, so you hate how I got a little bit of like stutter there. That's the micro SD card being a bit slow. I mean, I did hear him. Where is he? But overall, it performs absolutely fine. I think I might switch to a proper SSD and I should listen to an actual machine or find a better card because this isn't great. Where is he? There he is. Well, you get the idea. It's Quake 3. You could play this all day. Life's actually good. Or die. The only problem with the single player mode is when you're fighting a single bot, you spend half your time looking for them. I mean, of course I've got five. Where is he? Yeah, you get the idea. So it's only quite free. Obviously absolutely fine. I mean that game has been is well known and pretty optimized throughout its life so now last game I want to show is because this is why I wanted to build a proper machine 
it's mainly for CV audio games. Now this is an absolute classic of a game. Goes by the name of Shipwreckers in the States, I think. But over here, it was known as Overboard. Most of you probably played it on the PlayStation demo disc. Demo one if you had it. I mean, there's lots of bit of audio, but the actual CD audio is missing. So we've got some sound effects. As you can see, even at 1024768, we're getting around about 50 FPS. So you're not getting the fastest performance you could possibly get with this machine. But we are getting silent performance and it is smooth enough for this game. If only I could work out how to shoot. Oh. Okay. Tell it's an older game because the controls are weird. It's coming back to me now though. It made kind of sense. It's a greater down, less than sign, so less than to shoot left, greater than to you shoot right. But the point I was trying to make is there is no CD audio here and we are not getting very good sound effects as well as it's just shooting. And at 1024 we're not getting the best frame rate either. But even at 800 by 600 you can see we're still getting capped at 50 around about. Goes a little bit higher here and there. But we're not getting much more performance, so you might as well play it on the slightly higher resolution. But enough of that. If I had a cable for the CD ROM, which I've misplaced and I can't seem to find one, so I've had to order one, we would have had the audio there. So that's one of those few games you have to run from CD. But this is the basis of my new Windows 98 machine. And then we'll leave it on the benchmarks and then that's all I want to say for today. So thanks for watching. I'll probably feature this computer for the next couple of weeks because while I'm working on it, I want to get a better cooling system on the go and get it into a case. So stay tuned for that. But until then, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.